For decades, the Apnea Hypopnea Index, or AHI as many of you know it, has been used as the primary and often sole measurement to evaluate the effectiveness of CPAP therapy in treating sleep apnea. But as far as therapeutic measurements go, the AHI is an absolute joke. It's the laughing stock of the medical community. It's not accurate, it's not standardized, and it's not a reliable method to measure treatment efficacy. Not on its own anyway. Let me teach you a simple method you can use to validate your CPAP therapy report by monitoring your blood oxygen levels. All right, let's do it. G'day mates, let's jump in and take a look at John's Sleep HQ report. And for those tuning in for the very first time, welcome to the channel. Sleep HQ is my cloud-based CPAP reporting platform and it's free to use, so make sure you check it out. So here we are on Tuesday, July 12th, 2022. And at face value, just a quick glance here, John's results look bloody awesome. His apnea hypopnea index up here in green, 1.81, awesome, well under five. He's on a fixed pressure at the moment of 5.8 centimeters, so a CPAP machine. Look at his leak rates, 4.8, go John. And his daily usage, a very healthy eight hours and 50 minutes. If you opened up the My Air app, it'd show 100 points. Perfect score, unless you needed to get up and go wee wee during the night. In that case, they might sting you a couple. If you had an appointment with your specialist, well, you'd sit down, they'd open up the Airview report, and there would be congratulations, pop the champagne, high fives all around, slap you on the ass as you walk out, see you again in six months' time. It's because the AHI is so low. Because it's below five, they make the assumption that your sleep disordered breathing is adequately treated. But you know what they say about assumptions? and make an ass out of you and your specialist. All right, no more assumptions. We don't need to make assumptions. We have Sleep HQ, so we have all the information we need to make good treatment decisions. Minus one little piece of information that we'll have very soon. Now let's scroll down the page, and check out old Johnny Boy's breathing on the flow rate. Here we are, this blue one. Now I'm gonna click and drag just to zoom in a bit. Hmm, very interesting. Doesn't look too bad, does it? Relatively stable. Now on this occasion, the apnea hypopnea index calculation was relatively accurate, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's adequate airflow to maintain stable oxygen levels. And when you strip it all down, that's, that's what it's all about, all right? Good blood oxygen levels. So although this breathing looks okay, I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit. We have this little pink line here called flow limitation. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit just so you can see it more, I'm zooming in. So I'm just pressing X on the keyboard here to zoom out. So you can see here this pink line moving around. Now, as the pink line gets closer to one, it means there's very severe flow limitation and flow limitation is limiting the flow of oxygen into your lungs is a restriction in your upper airway yes it might not be a full 50 percent or more restriction required for a hypopnea classification but there can still be a restriction that can still limit the airflow into your lungs and this is what this pink line is showing here now as the pink line gets closer to zero it means the breathing is more normal i'll just find a little section here where it's close to one all right let's go to this little section here so we can see here with the flow limitation graph, it starts to, to move upwards. See it moving up towards one, it's at 78 here. And remember, as it moves closer to one, there's more restriction in the airway. It's restricting the airflow into the lungs. And I'll show you what this looks like on the flow rate. So with the flow rate, as the flow rate line moves up, that's John breathing in. And as it moves down, he's breathing out, he's exhaling. Now you can see the bottom at the exhale is like a sharp point. See how it's like a sharp, a sharp point? But look at the top of the inhalation phase. See how it's like, it almost looks like a tooth. It's like flat lined. See the little flat line here at the top? That's, that's flow limitation. Here's a quick example to help you visualize what we're talking about just now. Using of all things, a CPAP tube. Now think of this CPAP tube as, as your airway, your trachea. 
Now, as you can see right now, the airway is nice and open, right, making it nice and easy for gas exchange. Oxygen to get in, carbon dioxide to get out. Now, with a hypopnea, there's a 50% or more reduction in the airflow for 10 seconds or longer. With an apnea, 75% or more for 10 seconds or longer. It could be 100%. It could be completely blocked. I've seen some guys in the lab stop breathing for over two minutes. Blood oxygen levels down to 50%. You wonder if they're ever going to come up for air. Now, with flow limitation, maybe it's not 50%. Maybe it's only 40%. Maybe it's 30%. Whatever it is, right? it's not meeting the strict classification for a hypopnea or an apnea, but it's still restricting the air, the air getting into your lungs, causing your blood oxygen levels to drop and impacting your sleep. And we'll check that out now. All right, here we are, the blood oxygen levels. Let's have a look. So this is data straight off the O2 ring. And over here on the left, this one here, this is old mate John's data. And we're going to compare it with Uncle Nico on the right. All right, so July 12th, the same as the CPAP data we've just been looking at. Now, this section here, this is the blood oxygen section, the SpO2. And what you want with blood oxygen levels is stability, right? You want a nice sort of straight line. It means there's a good amount of oxygen getting into your lungs and you're not having a whole lot of desaturations where your blood oxygen level drops. And the reason it drops is because of the apnea, the flow limitation, the hypopneas. And what you can see here with old mates is it's not that stable, is it? You can see there's a whole bunch of drops throughout the night. Look, And the reason I wanted to show you my results is because you can really see the comparison here. So let's have a look at my results. Can you see how mine, it's a relatively straight line. This is what you want. You want results like mine. You're always going to get a few dips here and there, especially during REM sleep, or it's not going to be perfect. But at the same time, it gives you a great idea as to how stable your breathing is. That's what I'm trying to get out here. And you're really going to see what happens now when I show you a change in John's settings as to how it affects his blood oxygen levels. All right, we'll have a look at that now. All right, so we're back on Sleep HQ. July 12th, John's got his CPAP pressure fixed to 5.8 centimeters. And if we scroll down, we can see all this flow limitation. Here it is right here. I'll zoom in a little bit for you. Here it is, all the flow limitation. Think of it as airflow limitation. Now let's have a look what happens when John increases his CPAP pressure. All right, now remember his apnea hypopnea index 1.81, looking fantastic. His results are looking really good. So let's scroll forward to July 14th, a couple of days. Now look, what, look what's happened here. So he's increased his CPAP pressure from whatever it was before, I've already forgot, up to 10, the big increase. Look at his AHI, 2.42 now. So his AHI has increased, even though he's nearly doubled his CPAP pressure. But let's check out that flow limitation again. All right, look at this. There's not nearly as much flow limitation, is there? It's, it's all gone. And let's check out his blood oxygen levels. Now on the left over here is John's original data I showed you before with all the desaturations. You can see him here, I've drawn them in. And this is the new data with his new CPAP pressure of 10. Now his AHI increased, but have a look at his blood oxygen levels. So much more stable. And that's, and that's what we wanna see. And this will make a massive difference to John's overall sleep quality, but also his therapy. And one more thing, check this out. His pulse rate over here, 74. And with the new therapy settings, 10 centimeters, 71. The reason John's pulse rate has dropped is because there's more oxygen in his blood. And as such, his heart, boom, 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 pulsing away, doesn't have to pulse as hard to circulate the blood around the body. So some excellent results for John. But the take home message is this, if we had have just taken those initial CPAP results on face value, just gone off his AHI, yep, everything looks good. My air showing 100 points, perfect score, then, 
we never would have got this far. Okay, he would have kept his CPAP pressure on 5.8, thinking everything is great when it wasn't. This over here is not good at all. It's terrible. This here, much better. And here's some great news to finish up today's video. Over the next few months, all this great O2 ring data, your blood oxygen levels, your pulse rate, we're bringing it all into Sleep HQ so you can view it alongside your CPAP data. So stay tuned. Until next time, guys, sleep well, look after your mates, and I'll see you soon. Bye. For decades, the apnea hypopnea... <sighs> it's not accurate. It's not... The old man's calling me. <laughs> pop. There's Pop. <laughs> Should we... Let's pick up. Hey, buddy. I'm good, man. You're live on a video now, man. I'm on a, I'm on a video call with the rest of the world. Say hello. <laughs> For decades, the apnea hypopnea in the... Why do I talk so fast? Slow the fuck down. If you opened up your My Air app on your smartphone, phone, phone, fucking phone. If you opened up your My Air app on your smartphone,